right, what's going on, everybody? Today, I wanted to give you a little more in-depth uh, review, synopsis, whatever you want to call it, of Scream 6. I'm going to start with completely spoiler-free, so don't worry. The first three, four, five minutes of this um, will be spoiler-free, and I will let you know before I start diving into any spoilers. So if you want to tune out, see the movie, and then come back and watch the second half of the video, um, you can do that. So... We're going to get into um, some of the pros. I like to start with the positives. There were a lot of positives for this movie. Um, the opening. The opening was one of the best, if not the best. I mean, I know that's sacrilege to say. It definitely comes as close to topping the first as any movie has since. I think the opening of this movie was perfection i was they had me from hello, and I was ready to rock from from jump so Excellent, excellent opening. Um, buckle up when you go to see it because it starts off hot and heavy, as most screen movies do. So, um, again, first pro, amazing opening. Uh, second pro, uh, the core four, the the main cast that's coming back, they're even better than uh, Scream Five. They get a little bit more time to shine, especially characters like Tara and Chad, who. Um, you know, Tara spent a lot of time in the hospital, didn't really get to interact with anybody other than Sam for the most part, uh, or at least in any meaningful way. So we get to see a lot more of her and especially her interactions with some of the other characters, the core four and some of the other friends. So um, they all come back. Mindy's great, as always. Um, Tara's great. Sam's great. Chad's even better. Uh, I'm really, really happy with the people that they cast in these uh, positions. The actors and actresses are shining, and at the end of the day, you want me to come back and watch these movies, you have to find a way to make me connect with these characters, and they did it, and they did it even more. Uh, I'm even more invested after seeing Scream 6, so bravo on that. Um, one of the other pros is the kills. Now, the kills are fairly basic. Uh, you're going to get a lot of your ghost face stabs, your guts, uh, but for the most part, they're super brutal. Super brutal. So um, while they're not going to be as random as some of your other franchises, they're definitely stepping up the brutality of Ghostface with the progressing movies. And he is as brutal and vicious as ever in this movie. Um, I loved the pace of the movie. I thought that, again, like I said, uh, as is tradition with Scream movies, we got an opening phone call. We got an opening, you know, killer events if you will i won't spoil what exactly happens but um you know the killer shows up and from there it just keeps going and keeps pushing and and there's not really a lot of time to breathe because we're in new york and new york really uh, and that's a perfect segue to my next pro is new york as the setting um they i heard a couple complaints they didn't do enough i don't know what more you could do we got subway uh riding and 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 attacks and action which you see in the trailer we got you know high rise chases we've got dark alleys i mean i know you can't uh, you know, other than maybe a trip down Times Square, I don't know what else you could do to really capture New York. And really, there was the fear, the over-encompassing fear. You know, when you're in Woodsboro, for the most part, I feel like the characters felt safe because it was home. Um, they know that the killer could be anywhere, but you didn't have that constant sense of dread like you did in this movie. Uh, these characters are scared. They know that Ghostface could come for them in any direction at any time, and it's so hard for them to see it coming because of the amount of people um, that are jammed into New York City. So the setting shined. I felt like everything that I wanted from, say, Jason Takes Manhattan, they gave me with Scream Takes Manhattan. They did it, and they killed it. Um, and one of the last true 100% pros of the movie was all of the Ghostface uh, RLJ voice. I thought that we got tons of it, and I loved it. I love hearing him um, talk to the characters, you know, and be menacing, be maniacal, be evil, e e e be, be Ghostface. So uh, we got a lot of the Ghostface on the phone with people uh, talking. So 
Uh, definitely love that. Give me more of that in the next movie. I want even more. Uh, let's move on to the mixed. Now, again, mixed, I'm not high on it. I'm not low on it. Uh, it could go either way with another watch. Again, I've only seen the movie once. So, um, But the first thing that I was mixed on was Kirby's return. Now, I was happy to see her. I loved having another legacy character back, so to speak. Um, but she wasn't really the Kirby that we fell in love with. Now, it's understandable that somebody that went through what she went through would be a little jaded, be a little, uh, a little darker <laughs> than the plucky, uh, happy-go-lucky movie buff teenager that we saw in Scream 4. So I get that. But we didn't get a lot of the you know, horror movie. Not, we got the one scene with, uh, you know, but that's really it. Like, it's just, it's not, it's not what I was looking for in Kirby's Return. So, um, another thing that I was mixed on was Gail's presence in the movie. And that's all I'll say, uh, again, until we get into the spoilers, but, um, and I guess that's really all I can say without spoiling much again is, uh, there's a lot of things I loved about the movie, but until, I start to start talking spoilers. Uh, I can't really cover the negative. So this is your spoiler warning. Uh, I am about to start talking spoilers for Scream 6 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you're still here, you want to know. So one of the things that was mixed on was that there are three killers. Um, it wasn't so much that there were three killers. I think a lot of people expected that. It's that they all died. It's that all three of the killers died. I think at least one should have survived. Um, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But I do think one should have survived. Um, I had mentioned I was mixed on Gail's presence in the movie. She didn't really do a lot. She had the one scene that you see in the trailer. She finally gets her phone call. She has a really uh, cool setup scene that ends up just showing me that they didn't really know what to do with her because they made her do some really dumb stuff in that scene. Like when she was in the closet with the gun pointed at the door and you're like, I've got you, motherfucker. And then she decides to go walk out into the open where he could attack from any direction. And obviously it doesn't go well for her. Um, again, and that's a good segue into one of my cons is that they didn't have the nuts to kill Gail. I mean, you, in spite of what I just said, um, she had, she went down fighting. They had a great back and forth ghost face, you know, hit the killing blow, if you will. And then went for the classic, you know, double arm finish. And she was able to stop that. So he didn't get the satisfaction of you know, doing a finish him, but he killed her. He, he had her dead to rights. And I think that would have been the perfect go out for her, you know, tell Sydney he didn't get me. And then she died. Uh, and then it leads to perfect motivation for give her Robert Downey Jr. money. Give Nev Campbell Robert Downey Jr. money. You kill off Gale in this movie. You bring back Sydney in part seven to get revenge. I mean, the shit writes itself, guys. Like, I'm not even a screenwriter. And I'm telling you, people would pay money to see this. Now, they might still find a way to bring Nev back. But I think it lacks the urgency if you don't kill off another one of the legacy characters. You're obviously not going to kill off Kirby. You just brought her back. She was already dead. You brought her back. You're not going to kill her. Why not just follow through and kill Gail? Courtney Cox has given so much to this franchise. What more can she do, okay? Other than just be a sacrificial lamb at this point to enhance the um, stakes and and urgency and fear even more when Sydney comes back, because we know that she could die killing Ghostface in part seven. And and when nobody's truly safe, that's when you can really start to terrify people. So I think they missed the boat there by not following through on a perfect kill for Gale. Um, so that would have been another one of my cons. They should have definitely killed Gale. They almost did. I thought they did, um, but they didn't. That leads me to another con, is the insane amount of plot armor that these characters have. I mean, I guess taking a three-inch or four-inch knife in the back just don't mean shit, because Tara got stabbed up to the fucking hilt when she was kissing Chad, 
And then she got stabbed in the stomach, I believe, again at some point. So she's running around with two terrible knife wounds, and it's not even affecting her. I mean, she's having casual conversations with people afterwards, like, take me to the fucking hospital, I've been stabbed, and don't get me started on Chad. I'm glad that he's alive. I predicted that he was going to die. I'm I'm not upset that he's alive, but holy crap, the dude got turned into freaking Swiss cheese. They were stabbing the crap out of him, both of them, both of them. He was dead. Again, another great scene that's cheapened because they didn't have the nuts to follow through. They didn't want to break up the core four. Why? Why? We will come back. We will watch. We will watch. Tara and Sam and Mindy, if she survived, I believe that she could have survived her stab wound on the on the subway. Uh, you know, again, Mindy gets attacked on the subway. They make it look like she's dead too, but she survives. That was a little more believable. So many fake out deaths. So many fake out deaths. Holy crap, they were zigging, they were zagging. I'm thinking this character's dead, they're alive. I'm thinking this character's dead, they're alive. All of a sudden, we got three freaking killers. And my final con is the reveal and pretty much everything thereafter. It just didn't work as well as I think it could have. I do love the parallel between, obviously, in part one, it's Billy. Part two, it's Billy's mom. In Scream 5, it's Richie. In Scream 6, it's Richie's family. Um, I like that. Maybe it was the performances. I don't know. Um, the lead actor's name is escaping me, and I love him in most things that he does. But I wasn't even a huge fan of him as Mr. Cop Guy. And then when he went full batshit crazy, he completely lost me. I don't know if he thought he was in another movie, if he was back in Scream 3, but it just didn't fit the really serious tone. He went full on camp. So did his kids. And while it's entertaining to watch, I will give them that. And it wasn't enough to spoil the movie. This is still a strong rating. And I'll give you my rating in a, in a minute. Um, this is still a strong movie. What happened after the reveal, while it is a con, uh, did not do enough to ruin all the good they did. So I don't want you to think that I hated this movie. I just wasn't as big a fan of the reveal. And I think that the characters, the killers, went a little too campy, a little too corny, especially after the badass scene uh, where they were stabbing Chad. I just talked about the two killers were simultaneously stabbing Chad, and then they look at Tara and Sam, and they clean their knife at the same time. Fuck yes. I want more of that, and then you ruin it immediately by doing the reveal, and everybody just goes freaking Scooby-Doo. So, you guys were this close. This close to perfection. This probably would have been in contention for best screen movie. Now it's probably going to be 2, 3, 4. I don't know where it's going to fall yet. Right now... I'm going to put it as my favorite sequel. I'm going to say Scream, Scream 6, Scream 5, and then my way down. If you've seen my ranking, you know where all of my Scream movies rank. But I'm a big fan of the new ones. They will be my new favorite sequels, 5 and 6. I just think they've captured the essence of what made the first one so amazing. Um, and they're continuing to build on it. And if they can continue to build and stick the landing with Scream 7... Uh, you're talking about one of the greatest horror trilogies of all time. So I'm going to give Scream 6 a solid like 8.5. I think that it was probably a 9, maybe even a 9.5 until uh, the reveal. That dropped it down to an 8.5. I still really loved the movie. They did so much right. Um, so much right. So much was... It's a fun movie. It's a great, great watch. It's actually... There's a fair amount of humor. Um, some of Some of the new characters are entertaining. Most of them are not. Um, but again, the core four, you've got gold with those guys. And you, you know, the one thing you didn't do is you didn't kill any of them. So they will be back in the next movie. We're going to get more core four. Um, but yeah, so that's my honest to goodness opinion of Scream 6. At the moment, it probably is my favorite sequel. All right, if you all like the video, please like the video. Um, if you're not already subscribed, if you're new here, subscribe. There's, it costs you nothing, and it helps me out immensely. Um, and it shows me that you guys are interested in these videos. So 
Um, let me know, comment down below, let me know what you want to see. I'm thinking about doing some product reviews. I have a lot of really cool tech around me. So I was thinking about reviewing some of the stuff that I use on a daily basis with my editing and whatnot. So let me know if y'all are interested in that. I did start a stream today. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, it's enerd11. That's my handle on Twitch, enerd11. I'm going to try to stream maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays. I don't know yet. I'm still figuring it out. Um, but really, that's just to get more clips for y'all on YouTube. So thank you all very much. Again, the support's been great. I love you all. Have a great day.